five skincare acids. So if you're interested in skincare, if you're interested in getting good skin, by all means, um, stick around for this video. In dermatology, there are many acids that we use, uh, everything from hyaluronic acid through to uh, ascorbic acid, glycolic acids, uh, alpha hydroxy acids, lactic acid, for example, citric acid, mandelic acid, together with retinoic acids, and the list goes on and on. But today we'll be honing in on five, and five only uh, in this first segment. So if you want to know more about skincare, if I talk too quick, or if you miss things, or if there's product recommendations which you didn't get, by all means, um, my Instagram account is linked below. Uh, that gives you an idea, I guess, of the fine things on uh, the different acids. So the first thing we'll discuss is the use of um, alpha hydroxy acids. So alpha hydroxy acid is a group of acids. They include things like glycolic acid, citric acid, mandelic acid, and lactic acid. So today I'll be talking about glycolic acid because glycolic acid probably has the most amount of science. It's the one that's used by most dermatologists uh, in the context of uh, skincare and skin rejuvenation. So glycolic acid you can buy nowadays over the counter. You can buy super potent glycolic acids uh, from uh, places like The Ordinary or The Inkey List. These are very cost effective. In the scheme of things, they range from <laughs> anywhere between eight to nine dollars all the way up to the high end uh, glycolic acids. So what does glycolic acid do? Glycolic acid in the lower concentration uh, can help with certain things like congested skin, oily skin, uh, blackheads together with acne. In higher concentrations, upwards of, um, you know, we're looking at 35, 50, 70% even, glycolic acid can actually help with wrinkles, it can shrink down pore sizing, uh, and it can reverse sun damage, especially for solar keratosis. So how do you use this? Basically, you can use it either as a, as a serum, so a serum, lotion, or cream. Most commonly, it's a cream. Uh, you can buy, like I said, you can buy good stuff from uh, like cost, really cost-effective stuff nowadays. So 10 years ago, we were looking at uh, companies like Neostrava. So Neostrava makes really good uh, alpha hydroxy acids. They're, they range from a 10 all the way up to a 15%, and it's a buffered solution. The Ordinary makes things from a 10% all the way up to 30%. So one of the things that you have to be cautious with with alpha hydroxy acids is skin irritation. So if you get any redness, rosacea, sensitive skin, or if you're layering on other actives such as um, uh, retinol, retinoic acid, uh, any of the other actives which may irritate the skin like ascorbic acid, be cautious. So in other words, use it two or three times a week, uh, separate it from your actives and slowly increase it from there. So more on um, alpha hydroxy acids in the Instagram link. So now we'll be moving on to azalic acid. Azalic acid can be considered as an organic acid. This is a widely prescribed by dermatologists. Originally it was derived from uh, wheat, uh, from rye as well. So it can be considered organic, yeah? Azalic acid does many, many things. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so it can be used for conditions such as rosacea, sensitive skin. It's also antibacterial, so that's hence its use for um, acne. And because azalic acid is a um, category A medication, so in other words, it's got no contraindications in pregnancy or lactation, most dermatologists would use that as the anti-acne treatment of choice in patients who are um, pregnant or undergoing or contemplating conception. Yes, yeah, so it's exquisitely safe. Generally speaking, uh, it ranges in concentration between 5%, 10% is the most common, and it goes up to 15, even 20%. The higher you go, generally speaking, after um, 10, 15%, generally speaking, that's where you can get some irritant reaction. Not really an allergic reaction, but an irritant reaction. So azalic acid can be used for many things. Like I said, acne is great. Uh, it can also be used for rosacea, uh, and azalic acid can actually decrease pigmentation. So if patients have, um, for example, sun-induced pigmentation, hormonal pigmentation, melasma, cholesma, etc. Uh, azalic acid can, it's a weak inhibitor of tyrosinase. In other words, the enzyme which produces more pigment. So azalic acid is a, it is a multi, like it's like a Swiss knife. Yeah? It can be used by dermatologists, can be used by aestheticians for many, many uses. And the great thing is that it's benign, it's safe. So if you are contemplating one acid that should not react with your skin, it's gonna be azalic acid. 
more uh, on the Instagram link uh, over here. Okay, moving on, uh, we're talking now about ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid is also known as vitamin C, yeah? And the highest bioavailability is uh, from L-ascorbic acid. Generally speaking, the concentrations range from 10, 15, all the way up to 20%. The higher you go, the higher the chance of irritation. So once again, be very careful. The best formulations of um, ascorbic acid usually hover around the pH uh, between 2 and 3.5, which means it is acidic, hence the name. And if you do have any, uh, I guess, contraindications, for example, like rosacea, we mentioned sensitive skin, you may want to give this, um, I wouldn't say a mist, but you want to actually use this uh, as the last, uh, I guess, layering or, or the last, um, piece of the puzzle. Um, much, much safer if you uh, go for something like um, uh, the azalic acid rather than ascorbic acid in the context of sensitive skin. So what does ascorbic acid do? Ascorbic acid does a few things. Number one, it can reduce pigment. So that's why I think it's got, it's probably one of the biggest things here yeah, is it's a really good pigment inhibitor. Once again, it inhibits uh, tyrosinase, uh, which is the enzyme that produces melanin. Uh, ascorbic acid is also a very powerful antioxidant. So antioxidants prevent UV damage or decrease UV damage as a free radical scavenger. So it basically protects your underlying collagen from environmental factors, including UV, pollution, etc. Now, when we talk about brands, uh, once again, you can't beat, uh, I guess, when it comes to cost, the new players in the skincare range, like the ordinary, I keep mentioning it because you, you, you can't go past the ingredients, yeah, because if you're reading about the, the percentage, you're looking, holy moly, it's vitamin C, ascorbic acid, 30%, and you're comparing that against something else, which is 10%, and then the price range is, is enormous. So when you're looking straight at ingredients and percentage-wise, yes, yeah, certainly um, the lower and entry-level uh, skincare can be very competitive. But if you're after different formulations, you might want to try something like a bhaji, which is which is pretty good. Um, skin Suticals also make a uh, a very good as ascorbic acid. In their range, it's called CE ferulic acid. Super expensive, but realistically, one bottle should last you anywhere upwards of six months. Uh, I think in the US it's around 130 odd dollars. In in Australia, it's around 200 dollars. You make up your decision, uh, which is the best formulation uh, for your skin. I've linked a lot of other uh, ascorbic acid variants, uh, but once again, like I said, it's something which, in the scheme of things, you go retinoic acid, which is a vitamin A, niacinamide vitamin B, and then last of all, ascorbic acid, just due to the irritancy. Yeah, that's just my opinion. So we talked about those three acids. Let's talk about um, retinoic acid. So. Retinoic acid uh, is also known as, well, it's, it's retinol, which is over the counter that gets converted to retinoic acid. And then there's medically prescribed retinoids. So these are the most powerful molecules in dermatology. Retinoids can do a huge amount of things, including, uh, first of all, decrease sebum production. So it's a very powerful uh, molecule that decreases oil production. That's hence it's used in um, patients with seborrhea, in other words, oily skin. Uh, but most importantly, acne, including cystic acne, papillopustular acne, uh, together with blackheads and whiteheads. Um, so it decreases sebum, it decreases inflammation, it normalizes the um, uh, your cell turnover within the hair follicle itself, right? So that decreases a congested skin. And um, last of all, it is also um, antibacterial, yes, which means it does kill P. acnes, which is the bacteria implicated in the um, formation of acne. So it does all of those things. It also is a pigment inhibitor, and hence that's why um, compounded solutions often contain uh, a retinoic acid uh, derivative. So things like um, uh, your trilumas, yeah, which is your basically your hydroquinone, um, your hydrocortisone or your corticosteroid to decrease irritancy, and also your um, retinoic acid derivative. So it is a very flexible molecule. Uh, dermatologists also use this for uh, the treatment of many other skin conditions, yeah, including things like uh, sun damage, actinic uh, keratosis, solar keratosis, prevention of um, even skin cancers if taken orally, uh, and also lots of different disorders of keratinization. So retinoic acid itself can be bought over the counter. And once again, the solution, the, 
the selection is huge, yeah? So you can choose everything, like I said, from entry level uh, ret retinoids, yeah? Um, sorry, retinol, all the way to prescription slash over-the-counter retinoids. So let's uh, clarify between the retinoid and the retinol. Both of these get con yeah, so your retinol needs to have bioconversion to form retinoic acid. And these are over the counter. So like, like I said, all the other um, uh, entry level players, the ordinary, um, the inky list, they've got their own particular um, retinol solution. Then you can go up from there uh, for more expensive brands such as Aspect Doctor uh, and Environ. These are all great retinol solutions. The formulation really depends on what you like. Now, when it comes to retinoids in the US and in certain parts of Europe, you can get adapalene, which is a second generation retinoid, which is also known as Differin. Now that does not need um, bioconversion, so it does not need to be converted uh, to retinoic acid. Uh, it's derived as a, as a pure form, which means you, your, your skin can take it up a lot easier and you can have um, enhanced uh, biological activity. Flip side, this, there is a flip side with everything. For um, retin, retinoids compared to retinol, the retinoids have a higher side effect rate. So what dermatologists are pretty aware of are things called you know, retinoid glow. In other words, when you use it, you can be more sun sensitive because it compacts your stratum corneum, in other words, the top part of your skin. Certainly it increases epidermal thickness uh, and then you can have light sensitivity, but that's often in the long wave UVA and visible light spectrum. So in theory, um, certainly <laughs> over the counter uh, retinol can cause this, but it's more common with uh, retinoids. Other side effects of retinoids <laughs> is irritation. So if you get any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, a dryness, um, you've got to back off on it. Yeah, so my recommendations for patients are that if you've got sensitive skin, you might even want to try one night per week and then increase its tolerated. You might want to put on a moisturizer half an hour later, you might want to dilute it in a bit of um, benign moisturizer, for example, hyaluronic acid, yeah? And then slowly build up. But if you do have any irritation, don't push it because uh, it's, it's not that... Retinoids all have irritation. It depends on where you are on that threshold. If you exceed your own personal threshold, you will get irritation. It's not when, it actually is you will, right? So everyone's different. Some people can use it uh, one night a week and that's it. If that's you, don't push it. If you can tolerate it, increase two, three, four, five, six nights a week, then seven nights a week. And if you're that person who can tolerate um, over-the-counter uh, retinol and you want to, I guess, um, supercharge your, your skincare routine, your skincare regime, what you could do is combine it with alpha hydroxy acids because alpha hydroxy acids will increase the permeability of um, uh, certain actives including retinoids and retinol so you might want to use an alpha hydroxy acid two three nights uh, before your retinoic acid more and give yourself a clarisonic scrub or, or um, you know or a loofah scrub gently of course and then uh, put on the topical because that will increase your absorption rate but once again do that in caution so the last um, acid I'm talking about is kojic acid. So kojic acid is a favorite of mine because I treat a lot of pigmentation, including things like melasma, and I do need that time off hydroquinone, yeah? So basically the um, HQ free period. And my choice, generally speaking, is kojic acid. Kojic acid is, um, it, once again, it's, it's a naturally derived acid, but obviously <laughs> when in the lab and, and in, um, in the skincare, which you buy, it is uh, chemically made, yeah? So it is a chemical and is made in the lab, but you do find kojic acid in nature. So kojic acid, the biggest use for kojic acid, like I said, is inhibition of tyrosinase, which is your uh, pigment producing enzyme. And hence, that's why I like to use it for uh, patients with pigmentation, whether it be sun pigmentation, even for freckles, it can actually decrease freckles a little bit, but its main use is the off cycle uh, for patients with melasma. Generally speaking, the concentration start at around 0.5% and go up to about two to 3%. Generally speaking, if you exceed more than 2%, um, you will get not, not an allergy, but you will get skin irritation. So once again, like any active ingredient, you want to titrate. So you might want to use it, uh, like I said, 
two to three nights per week uh, and increase as tolerated. So kajic acid, there are many, many um, different, different brands. The brands which stand out, I mean, it, it's hard to say, yeah, because a lot of them don't actually tell you the percentage of kojic acid. Sometimes dermatologists, what we have to do is we compound it. So we compound kojic together with um, ascorbic because it's a uh, rat free radical scavenger, but not only that, it decreases oxidation uh, and we compound that, that with some types of retinoic acid. But as a standalone, uh, you can buy it on the internet from a company called Kojisan. The soap itself does not work, yeah, so don't bother using soap. The soap is more of a marketing ploy for skin lightening. But Kojisan, I know that I've had quite a fair few patients uh, buy this for their melasma. It's, like I said, it's not as good as like your Triluma or your, your Hydroquinone or your Hydroquinone standalones, uh, but it's far, far safer for long-term use. So Kojisan is a Japanese brand. It's not expensive at all. Um, La Roche Posay also makes uh, a formulation which contains kojic acid. So have a look here in the, in the formulation. It contains kojic, but once again, they don't tell the concentration. I presume uh, it's somewhere around 1% because that's most common concentrations. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very short one. Um, it's actually 16 minutes. I can go on and on about the acids, but we'll, we'll break it in two. Uh, next time around, we can talk about other acids, including things like lactic acid, citric acid, mandelic acid, hyaluronic acid, and a whole heap of different uh, acids. But that should wrap it up. Um, if you are trying to actually get into these skincare acids, like I said, the biggest hint, start off with azalic acid. Probably leave things like high strength alpha hydroxy acids and 20% uh, L ascorbic acid towards the end. So start slow, go up from there and your skin will thank you for that. Uh, guys, if you like this video, please, by all means, uh, like. If you think it's value for uh, a share, by all means, share, comment, and make all the good things grow. I'll see you uh, next week, and stay safe. Bye for now.